Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is your host Raj here. Happy New Year to you all. I hope you are not too disappointed in the market today. Things have been looking really ugly. Let's hope tomorrow is better. Uh this morning I promised to get you an update on Allogen and why the shares are spiking. Uh, I mean Allogen shares really jumped up in the last few days. Of course they fell today but um, there was a huge jump. and that caught my attention well here is the video as per the promise promise is kept i personally do not have any shares of allogen uh, but could consider buying in future and i have my reasons for it and will share with you in this video i'll also be showcasing the fda approved competition for the flagship carty uh, allo 501a and also explain why allo 501a will be superior and why allogen will be having a mini ecosystem to give it added advantage that said let's get started welcome back friends allogen has an impressive pipeline of over 13 candidates Eight of them are focused on hematologic malignancies, and five are focused on solid tumors. Of these, four are targeting CD19 and in various stages of clinical trial, and two are targeting BCMA, and one is targeting CD70, and one targeting FLT3. Today, let us focus on Allo 501A and Allo 647, for which there was a data release in December 2023. I personally feel that this is a significant development. A few years ago, I had heard of this concept but thought it may probably not uh, come to happen and it may not work, but uh, I didn't think much of it and let it be. Uh, especially after Magenta folded up, it uh, Magenta was a uh, uh, a conditioning agent and it was supposed to be gentle, but it didn't work out. So at that time I just put this off my mind and never thought about it. and uh, now i think it's um, it's time to have a second look and here's the lay of the land as it stands right now for the competition for allo 501a so out here i have a chart in front of me i mean you can see the chart on the screen uh, so you have uh, novartis with chimera uh, and which is a uh, chimera which is a cd19 autologous uh, therapy for uh, lbcl and it was approved in 2017 by uh, fda also uh, gilead uh, gilead cscarta was approved in 2017 which is a cd19 autologous uh, therapy and then again uh, gilead has got uh, tecartus which was approved in 2020 which is a cd19 carty uh, therapy uh, and uh, then we have uh, bristol myers squibb with berianzi Uh, which was approved in 2021 which is a cd19 autologous therapy and mo- all of them are targeting relapsed and repra- uh, refractory lbcl and in one case a different cancer all of the above are selling in the price range of 373000 to 475000 for each one time infusion then looking at our own pipeline we have crispr therapeutics with ctx112 for rela- relapsed and refractory lbcl and uh, ctx112 has two special edits to enhance anti tumor activity and enhance the functioning of car t now on to allo 501a with allo 647 and why it is better in my opinion to the entire class of anti cd19 car t and also why it is a big asset for allogen so let me start with the objective of allo 647 the primary objective of allo 647 which is a monoclonal antibody is to selectively deplete host t cells during allogenic car t cell therapy specifically in the context of treating large b cell lymphoma or lbcl using car t therapy targeting cd19 and allo 647 is a humanized anti cd52 monoclonal antibody or mab and its purpose is to facilitate lympho depletion which involves the controlled reduction of the patient's existing t cell this depletion is critical for uh, preparing immune system and creating a more favorable environment for the introduction of allogenic car t cell products like allo 501 or 501a and allo 715 Uh, so let us talk a little bit about how allo 647 works allo 647 operates through its interaction with cd52 a cell surface glycoprotein 
The CD52 gene has been edited in the allogenic CAR T cell products, ALO501 and ALO715, to enable the use of ALO647 for selective T cell depletion. ALO501 is, uh, is uh, targeting CD19, whereas ALO715 targets BCMA. So having said that, by employing this humanized anti-CD15 monoclonal antibody, ALO647 can specifically target and eliminate host T cells, and this targeted deple depletion serves multiple purposes. First, it reduces the graft versus host disease or GVHD risk. The disrupted uh, uh, TCR alpha uh, constant gene in the allogenic CAR T cell products uh, is designed to mitigate the risk of GVHD, a common complication associated with allogenic uh, th cell therapies. And the selective removal of host T cells by ALO647 complements this strategy further, further minimizing the potential of GVHD. The second advantage is that the lymphodepletion for CAR T cell therapy um, uh, creates space and reduces competition for the newly infused allogenic CAR T cells. This lymphodepletion enhances the effectiveness of CAR T cell therapy by allowing the introduced cells to proliferate and exert their anti-tumor effects more robustly. Now on to why this is superior. I would like to talk to you about uh, the concept of an ecosystem. And uh, I think that uh, this ILO647 and the other uh, allogenic uh, CAR T cell therapies of uh, allogene can form an ecosystem uh, because uh, they can work in tandem. They can work like a pair of hunting dogs and go together. One of them is protecting the uh, main agent and uh, eliminating the enemies. So you can look at it that way. Or uh, when we look at a bomber, which is going to bomb uh, a particular location. The bombers are big and they need protection. So they're flanked by fighter aircrafts which uh, protect the bomber while the bomber does its work. So similarly out here, all the allogenic CAR T therapies of uh, allogene, uh, which are targeting T cells, can now use ALO647 uh, to protect it and uh, selectively deplete the uh, host uh, CAR T and make room for allo, uh, allo, allogenes uh, modified CAR Ts. It is surgical and efficient and it will be a better experience for the patient. So what is new? Okay, let us, um, let us look at the latest data release that says a comprehensive review of all patients in phase 1 alpha slash alpha 2 trials demonstrate that adding allogenic uh, allo647 to standard lymphodepletion can yield durable responses and a safety profile comparable to approved autologous CAR T therapies. And the company has received a fast track designation for allo647 for use in adult patients with relapsed or refractory large B cell lymphoma or LBCL in November 2023. The safety review, which encompasses all 87 phase 1 patients treated in both relapsed uh, slash refractory large uh, or LBCL and follicular lymphoma, demonstrates that investigational ALO647 added to standard lymphodepletion can safely provide a window for the expansion and persistence of allogenic CAR T cells and has the potential to induce deep and durable remissions in relapsed and, uh, and treatment of uh, refractory cancers. The addition of ALO647 to standard lymphodepletion did not result in adverse events beyond those uh, commonly observed with autologous CAR T cell therapy. The US FDA granted fast track designation for the investigation of ALO647 in adult patients with uh, RRLBC LBCL, based on its potential to enhance standard lymphodepletion. Uh, now, here is the thing that is brilliant in my opinion. The ALO501A CAR T cells do not have CD52, whereas the patient T cells have CD52. ALO647 is a monoclonal antibody that is anti-CD52 and efficiently disposes of uh, host uh, uh, T cells and creates space for ALO501A. And the same strategy has been used in ALO715, which is an anti-BCMA CAR T paired with ALO647. I think if they can pa patent ALO647, uh, uh, it would pair with most CAR T as long as CD52 is uh, deleted. I see a big market for that, and Allogen can partner with other companies which are doing CD19 or CD52 or uh, sorry, CD19 or BCMA or any other uh, CAR T therapies for uh, this kind of uh, lymphodepletion uh, acceleration. Uh, so I see a big market uh, for allogen well beyond their own 
uh, patients. And secondly, like an Apple iPhone has its own adapter, we have a mini ecosystem here with a lymphodepletion agent that can be paired with the CAR-T. And this provides allergen a distinct advantage. Allogenic therapies are difficult to perfect, but once perfected, they have significant advantage over autologous CAR-T because the logistics of treatments is highly simplified and also the lead time from patient request to shot in the arm is very short and the therapy can be picked up from the cell. And the CAR-T cells are now coming from a healthy uh, donor and therefore they are much stronger than the autologous CAR-T which comes from the patient themselves which is already in a difficult situation. Another factor is that uh, shipping and product sales and delivery logistics mirror current standard practices and so do not need any special infrastructure to be built. Uh, for this. And now remember that recently FDA determined that the risk of T cell malignancies is applicable to all currently approved BCMA uh, and CD19 directed genetically modified autologous CAR T cell immunotherapies. T cell malignancies have occurred in patients treated with several products in the class. That includes all the autologous uh, therapies that I spoke about and that I prized in the beginning of this uh, video. Uh, so you can see. Uh, the advantage that uh, allogene has got in the CD19 and BCMA CAR-T field. Next, we should note the fact that allo 501 a is already in phase two. Let's take a look at the timeline on their website. I'll show you the timeline here. As you can uh, see here in this diagram, uh, the lymphodepletion happens five days before uh, the, uh, the treatment begins. And then from day zero to day 28 is the actual treatment uh, duration. And after that, it's follow up all the way up to the up to month 60. Uh, and after that, it is a long term follow up and end of study. And I had a, a quick look elsewhere uh, to find out uh, what is the uh, end date for uh, for this uh, study. And it happens to be September 2027. Uh, which is the end date and I'm not sure if it's the end date for phase one because they already started phase two so I'd assume that it's the end date for uh, phase two that they have uh, kept in mind. Having said that I personally feel that it, it's a longer duration of time and um, the acceleration in the share price I think was a knee-jerk reaction and I think uh, there's a long way for the company to go. If the company succeeds, then it will be best in class for uh, RRLBCL. And you can imagine the margins uh, in this therapy, given that it does not need to do autologous logistics and it will be superior to all autologous CD19 and BCMA therapies, unless the existing companies find a way to reduce the malignancy risk in their products. So let us also take a quick look at their uh, pipeline and I'll show you uh, how strong it looks. Here is the pipeline for um, Allogene and as you can see uh, there are four CD19 ca uh, candidates of which uh, we have Allo501A five, uh, uh, which is going through various uh, phases uh, of um, uh, clinical trial and we have some BCMA targets and we have some CD70 and FLT3 uh, targets for AML and of course we have got solid tumors, two CD70 candidates uh, and one DLL3 and one uh, uh, one more candidate which is ALO 182 and seven undisclosed targets. So I do not see any alliances out here but basically it's a wide enough um, uh, pipeline and plenty of candidates to work on and we can see that there are already three candidates which are in phase one uh, clinical trial. Two of them are the BCA, BCMA uh, targeting CAR-T and uh, one of them is a uh, CD70 targeting uh, ALO316. So uh, that's what we have here. And um, uh, I, I would like to uh, think that uh, it's going to take this company a, l a little while before uh, it can get ALO501A uh, approved, uh, along with its uh, lymphodepletion agent, which is of course on the fast track. So having said that, I think if we look at the Q3 um, 2023 uh, earnings report of Allogen, uh, it shows that they have 497.7 million in cash equivalents and, um, and they are projecting a cash runway uh, well into second half of 2025, which means that there will be equity dilution in 2025 unless the company gets collaboration revenue from some big pharma. And at this point, it would be uh, interesting to dig a little bit into the history of Allogen 
Pfizer holds a 25% stake in the company since its creation in 2018 out of Kite Pharma. If one digs deeper, one can see the hand of Pfizer in getting this company up and running with rights to over 16 preclinical CAR T therapies licensed from Selectis and uh, Servier, of which one was an allergenic anti CD19 CAR T. So, overall, the current enthusiasm in the market is justified, but the goalpost is way out in the future. And as we say, in a longer time horizon, many risks can manifest and competitors can emerge, competitors can improve. And I think the sudden spurt in the share price was a knee-jerk reaction. But overall, the news is good and it definitely improves the valuation of Allogene. And uh, friends, uh, that's all for today. That was a deep dive into Allogene. But we haven't done an actual deep dive into Allogene because we have not looked at all their portfolio uh, of uh, products or pipeline. Uh, we will do that for another day. Uh, and we have not done a valuation for Allogene. We have just looked at the fundamentals of the company. Uh, and we have looked specifically at uh, Allo 501A and their new lympho depletion agent. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. But Allogene is looking good. And uh, friends, that's all from me for today. Please let me know what you think. Uh, do you like these kind of uh, deeper digging uh, videos or you're more into fundamentals or you're more into technicals please put your comments in the feedback because our channel is now uh, entering the third year of its existence and uh, i'm very determined that this year uh, the quality of our videos should be way better than what it was in the previous year and your feedback can definitely help me so please let me know what you like best in the channel. Do you like me doing technical analysis? I'm doing one on a daily basis for the entire market, including genomics. Uh, do you like me doing deep dive videos like this one where I talk about the technology of the product? Uh, or uh, would you like me to do the earnings release uh, reviews? Uh, so just let me know uh, what you think. And also you can suggest uh, any new uh, co components that I can cover in the channel. Uh, that will help me improve the offerings for this year. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now. And thanks for your support throughout 2023. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. A great deal of success to all of you. Bye for now.